God bless you, and welcome to another episode of God at Work in our series, Can You Hear Me? And today, we're looking at how God speaks and directs our paths, directs the directions we're going. And sometimes, as I am subtitling it again, a life interrupted. Because sometimes we'll have plans, and our plans will take us one direction. And God says, uh-uh, we're making a complete turn and going that way and we have to be open and willing to say okay god i don't get it i see what i'm going here i know where i'm going here i know what i'm doing here i got it all set god says i have it set for you to go the other way and sometimes it's not an easy decision because sometimes this one looks all in perfect order and god's not saying it's not the perfect order that makes a difference is that it's my order. And so when we're looking to him to lead us and guide us, he's more than willing to do so. But it's up to us to have hearts that are willing to say, yes, Lord, I'm willing. So Jerry's going to do my theme song for this, for this series. Um, I will look to Jesus. Whichever way the world goes, whichever way the wind blows, I will look to Jesus and follow where he leads. Though storms may rage around me, and wars come past surround me, I will look to Jesus and follow where he sees beyond the present to a future resplandescent a day with no more sorrows when all tears are wiped away though torments have assailed me his love has never failed me so I will follow Jesus till my dying day Whichever way the world goes, whichever way the wind blows, I will look to Jesus and follow where He leads. Though storms may rage around me and wars come past surround me. And no brother, my father, or my mother, unless they follow him, much less some politician, a preacher or musician, no actor or physician, unless they follow him, whichever way the world goes. Whichever way the wind blows, I will look to Jesus and follow where He leads. Though storms may rage around me, and wars come past surround me, I will look to Jesus and follow where He I will look to Jesus and follow where he leads. I will look to Jesus and follow where he leads. That has been a desire of my heart for so long. I can't say that I always achieve it, but I always try to achieve it. 
Sometimes I might not quite make it, but I try. But there's a quote here by Elizabeth Elliot that I just wanted, wanted to share with you. It's just a little quote from one of her books. And it says, when our plans are interrupted, his are not. His plans are proceeding exactly as scheduled, moving as always, including those minutes or hours or even years which seem most useless or wasted or unendurable. His plans are proceeding exactly as scheduled. And, you know, sometimes we can be in the middle of a situation and think things are going well, and then all of a sudden, things are halted. Things aren't going the way they're supposed to be. Things are changing. And I thought, God, what's going on? I remember one time I was about to catch a plane. Now, when I traveled for years, I always had my flute with me. And my flute, you know, it was a very valuable instrument. And I always carried it in my hand. It was in a black case, a black, a black box looking case. And I always had it in my hand. It didn't go, it ever went in my check luggage. And I always had it right there. And I was at an airport. I was just sitting, waiting for my flight. And all of a sudden, I've got all of these security police surrounding me with big guns. And what's going on? And they were demanding to see my black box. I looked at them. And they informed me they'd had a phone call advising them that there was a bomb threat and that it was in a black box. So here they are opening up my flute and it was a kind of special flute. It had the main part of the flute and it had the foot joint of the flute and it had two head joints. One was with a microphone in it and one was just a regular one. So it was a pretty special flute and they're going through this thing looking at everything and examining and they take, they're taking it, they're looking through their eyes at it, you know, trying to look at every make sure there was nothing weird. And it had a cleaner bar. They're shoving the cleaner bar in and out, making sure there was nothing loose in there. And finally I said, look, it's it's a musical instrument. And so then they told me to, to play it. So I just put the pieces together, and blew a note for them, just so they knew that it really was a flute and that it worked. And they finally let it, let it go. But in the meantime, I'd missed my flight. So I you know, I'm telling them, I got to get to the plane. They're calling my flight now, you know. And they would not let me go until finally, by the time they let me go, I had missed my flight. So then I had to go back and reschedule and everything else. And things were not looking good. They couldn't get me on another flight to where I was going that day. They had to get me on a flight. I was heading to, to Af Africa, to Ghana. It was when I was heading down to Ghana. And I got on another flight, but I had to go via Nigeria. And then straight on to Ghana. But because it was supposed to be a direct flight, you know, from where I, from up in Europe down to um, Accra, I wasn't supposed to have to have a visa for Nigeria. So they told me I didn't need one. And then they told me I still didn't need one because I was only going to be in transit only for less than three hours, I believe it was. And fine, I get on the plane and we're heading down there and when I got down to Nigeria, they're looking at my papers. Where's your visa? You, I, I told them I was told I didn't have one. And then they said, but your flight's been delayed. You're going to be here more than three hours. So they put me in this little in-transit-only lounge, and I had to sit in there. It wasn't like a lounge. It wasn't like in, um, in um, the Admiral's Club or anything else. It was a bunch of wooden benches with no backs or anything else, just wooden benches that I had to sit on and stay there. But I had all my luggage with me because they couldn't send my luggage on without me. So there I was with all my luggage. And I had a bunch of boxes of stuff I was taking and everything else. And I'm sitting there. Can't close my eyes because if I do, who knows what's going to happen with all of my luggage, you know. And I am sitting there. My plans were drastically interrupted from a direct flight down. And all of a sudden, I'm going this way. And then... I said, God, what's going on? Look at all this time. He said, there's no time being wasted. My plan is in perfect timing. So the flight that I finally got on to take me to Ghana, I was seated next to a person. They upgraded me. I didn't travel much at that point, but they upgraded me because of the mess they'd made of all of my plans. And so there I was. I was sitting next to this person. And um, 
he happened to be the owner of a, it's like a concert hall, club, etc. the whole combination of things. And the next thing you know, we were talking and he asked if I would consider doing a, a concert for him. I was going down there to do some music anyways. I was already on a music contract. And he said, would you consider doing a concert in my club? So I ended up doing this. And it was at that concert that I met, if you've heard any of the other older stories, that I met the African king. And that was what really completely changed the way things went for me in Ghana. So my life was completely interrupted. Completely. I mean, I ended up arriving, I don't know how many days, two days later than I was supposed to, I think it was, sitting up all night in this hard, on these hard benches in Nigeria. I wasn't even allowed out to get some money. You could only purchase, you could purchase drinks, but you had to have the Nigerian currency to do it. And because I didn't have the right visa, I wasn't even allowed out to get Nigerian currency. So finally, there was this nice gentleman that he, he offered to buy me a drink because he saw that I was, I was looking, trying to figure something out. I was, I was offering to exchange some money with somebody and nobody would touch it, you know. But, so there was my life completely interrupted. But God knew what he was doing because his change of plans completely made my time in Ghana far more fulfilled and far more far more profitable and fruitful in the way of the ministry that I'm done down there. He opened so many doors for me that I would never have been able to open on my own. But if I had grumbled and complained and said, I have to wait and you know get this next flight because I want the direct flight, etc., that would never have happened. I would never have been on that flight to meet that gentleman. That through him, I ended up meeting Nana, the Ashanti king. So when God's plans are interrupted, when his plans are interrupted by our plans, and so when our plans are interrupting his, he could just take things and turn them. I mean, that was not comfortable, sitting in the airport with all these guards with guns. You know, some of them had them actually pointed, searching out my flute box. But, oh, well, I made it, and God's plans prevailed. There's a verse in chapter, Jeremiah chapter 29, 11. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I tell you that hope and a future came through abundantly when God's plans prevailed, when God's plans took the main plan, took the main route, took the main stage in every action from that point on. And it was amazing that what God did. But, you know, the scripture in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, it tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not de depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. So seeking his will, in that instance, it made things so completely different. But then, years later, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Well, years later, I was on my way to Mexico to do some speaking with some pastors and churches down there. And all of a sudden, I found out that a very dear friend of mine that I'd known many years ago was living in Mexico City. And so I got in touch with her and I said, look, I'm going to be in Mexico City. Maybe we could meet up. It ended up her and her husband offered me a place to stay while I was down there because I was going to be in a hotel by myself. And to be honest, I was a little bit nervous with all the horror stories I'd heard of Mexico City. And so my friend's husband came to pick me up at the airport. And you know what? That's when I first met Jerry. And since then we were talking and, and this friend of mine that, uh, gave me the number to call Jerry's wife. You know, he said, he's one of the best musicians you're going to find. You know, he'd be great to work with you. Well, we were talking and it ended up, I never did those meetings that I went down there to do. The person I went down there to work with, they'd had some heart problems and things had come up. And all of a sudden, my whole plan was interrupted. I went down there to speak, to do some conferences, to do some meetings. 
And then all of a sudden, thank God I had Jerry and Mary Ann's place to stay at because otherwise I would have been stuck in this hotel room alone while they were taking care of some a heart issue and I would have been stuck with nothing. But we got to talk a lot and we did a lot of talking and I listened to a lot of Jerry's music and you know, I, I shared with them what I was doing, things like that. And looking at it, then, you know, God very clearly, he said, ask Jerry if he would like to work with you. And I was thinking, but God, I've been working on my own with you all these years so that I can go where I want to go, when I want to go. I don't have to worry about travel expenses for another person. Just taking care, they take care of mine, Lord. And, and, and God, you know, then I got to work around somebody else's schedule. You know, and Jerry and Mary Ann have a very large family. And so trying to work around their schedule with their children and everything else made things a little more complicated. But you know what? Just like that quote from Elizabeth Elliot, when our plans are interrupted, his are not. His plans are proceeding exactly as scheduled, moving us always, moving us. And I tell you, God, Jerry and I have had some very amazing and wonderful adventures along the way that would never have happened if my plan had not been interrupted, if my plan had not been halted and God's plan put into place. There's another thing. You know, if we encounter, and if we want to encounter God, I should say, if we want to encounter God, we had better be ready for interruptions along the way. Because, you know, the Bible tells us very clearly, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. That's Proverbs 19, verse 21. I like the living translation of it. It says, you can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. So you can make all the plans you want, but if you're willing and you want, and you want to encounter God and you want to follow him, you need to know that his plans will prevail. God has a habit of interrupting. In every case, once the adjustment was made, God accomplished his purpose through those changes. So are you ready for your plans to be interrupted? Are you ready to let God have his way? Or do you want to carry on in your own? I can tell you the times when I've tried to stubbornly push through on my own. It's not had the same fruitfulness. It's not had the same excitement even. It's not had the same results. But when I say, okay, God, you're interrupting. I don't know why. I don't understand it, but it's in your hands. And Jerry and I are now still working together. It's been quite a few years now that we've still been working together. And you know what? I'm thankful for each and every one of these episodes that we get to do, for all the places that we've get, gotten to go, and that we will continue to go as things open up a little more. But in the meantime, let God interrupt your plans. You'll find it's worth it. I sure have. Anyways, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the interruptions that you've made in my life. Things that I've not understood. Many times I've wondered why. I've even questioned why, God, this doesn't make sense. But you know what I've learned? Even if it doesn't make sense to me, if it's your way, your leading, your your guiding, it doesn't matter if it makes sense to me. What matters is that your plan is prevailing. So God, I ask that each and every one of us as we go forward, that we will be willing to allow you those interruptions in our life so that your will will be accomplished. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So expect interruptions if you really want God to work in you and through you. Not only realize they'll come, but expect them. They're going to happen. Okay, God bless you. And if you have enjoyed this and you'd like to sow into the ministry, please feel free. Jerry will put the details up on screen so you'll be able to do so. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. <music>